What is the University of Oklahoma Research Cabinet? Research Cabinet Director Paul Risser says it's not a piece of furniture. It's a group of top university leaders coordinating research activities for all OU campuses. Risser says that collaboration helps create more multidisciplinary research, scientists from different areas working together to solve problems. Research expenditures are at an all-time high at OU, topping $113 million this year, a 10 percent increase. OU's many research activities include biotechnology, genetics, weather science, and applied social sciences. Risser is a former state higher education chancellor. He took us on a tour of one of OU's research buildings, the Stevenson Research Center. Inside are scientists studying zebrafish genetics, high performance computing, and mapping of genomes. <laughs> We're here in the, the Stevenson Technology Research Center on the OU campus. This is one of the newer research buildings that brings a lot of, of uh, projects together under one roof. Um, can you talk about, about that and, and how this is an example of, of what's happening with research at OU? Yes, it's a very good example of what's happening at research at the University of Oklahoma, and it's happening elsewhere in good universities where Disciplines that used to be separate in their own buildings, now they all come together to work together. So for example, in this building alone, we have faculty members and researchers from 10 different departments all working in this same building. It's also uh, built in such a way that researchers and graduate students and undergraduate students can all move around and get together and work together very, very easily. There are not very many solid walls in this building right. just for that reason. Yeah. What, what are, if you just talk generally about the OU campuses, what are some of the, the areas of research that OU has, has excelled at? The university has great strengths in a number of areas. Um, I, I should point out that our theater just was selected as one of six to go to Washington, D.C., so we have lots of strengths at the university. Mm -hmm. In terms of research, uh, I would say there are several areas. Uh, one of those is genetics, particularly genetics right. of health care. Um, health and treatment of diseases. Uh, we have obviously a very strong program in petroleum engineer, engineering and geology and geophysics. That's been a traditional strength and it has some new applications these days. Uh, thirdly, I th think we have great strength in weather science. Uh, mm -hmm. We have the National Weather Center here, which again is an integrated program of lots of different disciplines and departments. Right. And then an area which is coming together very strongly is uh, an area, I'd say, of a, a pl applied social sciences. Mm -hmm. And it brings together communication and economics and, and sociology really to address important questions like um, homeland security, mm -hmm. uh, like terrorist threats. It also brings ways that we can communicate our science to broader communities, um, much of our health care. Uh, works with the Native Indians, Native Americans here in this state. Okay. And so we have, I think, good applied social sciences now to share information among different communities. So I'd say those areas are really right. the top ones where, where we bring together genetics, where we focus on petroleum engineering, mm -hmm. focus on applied social science right. and weather science. Are the, the scientists, the researchers, are they kind of working, do they work in their their own spheres or uh, is there a lot of cross collaboration going on even between disciplines? There's a lot of cl collaboration. Just think about um, infectious diseases for a moment. That clearly has to do with bacteria, has to do with immunology, has to do with traditional health care, also has to do with genetics and mm -hmm. in today's world of genomics and proteomics it also is computer science because okay. all those data are huge data sets and so um, the fact that we have very strong supercomputing capability at the university, just think about what I've described and a lot of disciplines coming together. So when we think about disease control or disease, um, how we manage disease, how we treat disease, then bringing those disciplines together is very, very important. And so the fact that we have a health science center and a combination with the Norman campus and a community health in Tulsa makes mm -hmm. it a very, very strong part of the university. Can you talk about specific uh, products that have come from research that originated on OU campuses? Yes, let me give you an interesting example which relates to healthcare in an unexpected kind of way. Uh, we have a faculty member in electrical engineering. His name is Patrick McCann, 
Uh, he's a very talented person, got his undergraduate at, at Berkeley and his PhD at MIT, and he leads a program in which it really is it's integrated circuits, it's lasers, it's using those techniques to actually measure the chemicals that one detects in the air, mm -hmm. even in the air that we breathe. And so the application is that we know that um, when patients have cancer or they have diabetes, you can actually measure the chemical differences as they exhale. And what he's created by using uh, infrared infrared lasers is ability to actually detect those chemicals and so that will become a diagnostic tool and so okay. he's actually created a company uh, which has a dozen or so employees now using that technology mm -hmm. so here is all the way from genetics through engineering to a new product and a new company that's come from the university right and is research something that that could be profitable uh, for universities when products go to market? It can be. Um, the most famous example probably is Gatorade, which, mm -hmm. was, uh, which was produced as, a, out, as a, an outcome of research at a university in Georgia Tech. Um, the University of Wisconsin produced um, a rat poison called warfarin and became very, very rich on that. So sometimes, yes, technologies can be marketed in various ways. Sometimes companies are spun out of universities like the mm -hmm. one I just described. Sometimes patents, patents are, are sold to companies who then develop them. Sometimes they're licensed. Sometimes there are combinations of those. Mm -hmm. uh, but universities focus first on research and creating knowledge and, and obviously ed educating students. But there sometimes is technology that's produced which becomes very, very useful. Right. And, and OU also hosts uh, serves as a landlord for companies here on your campus. And, That's right. And tell me why, how that benefits both the company and, and the university. It does. It's, and the good universities do this now. They become partners with the private sector. So they share knowledge, they share facilities, students become employees and work for, for companies who are on the campus or near the campus. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example in our in our weather area, we have quite a number of companies on this campus, private companies mm -hmm. in the same building. In fact, the building where my office is has private companies in the very same building. Mm -hmm. In that case, it's a matter of sharing weather data, and the company then uses it for commercial purposes, and the university collects the information and makes it available. Right. So, for example, weather data is collected, analyzed, uh, by our scientists and by scientists from NOAA. Mm -hmm. And that data is then used uh, to predict storms, to predict uh, the most um, efficient pathways across the ocean, for example, for ocean liners. Mm -hmm. It's used for estimating crop insurance rates, mm -hmm. all kinds of things. So it, it's a very, anymore, a very close combination between the private sector and this university. And I think that's one of the ways this university has changed. I think our research has become more applied, it's mm -hmm. become more directly connected to the private sector and we become really partners with businesses. Susan Simpson, The Oklahoman.